we asked the question, what is behind the Cowboys organization and the fans' fascination with Trey Lance? 877-881-1053. Because throughout training camp, there's a lot of discussion about Trey Lance, but it felt like after the first game, but definitely after the second game, they're like, oh, how did, what about Trey Lance? What about Trey Lance? Obviously, yesterday or uh, on Saturday, Trey Lance was a huge talking point. We'll get to that in a minute. What about Trey Lance? What about Trey Lance? He's the third string quarterback. Backup quarterback's the most famous quarterback. But he's the backup to your, the backup. Your starter is garbage, right? Anything that's unknown is going to be better. Like, that's just the way that it is, Kevin. Okay. Uh, it's been that way for decades. Okay. Remember when we were like, Quincy Carter, not going to cut it. We need Anthony Wright in there. And then we saw what Anthony Wright could do, and we were like, all right, never mind. Let's go. To, let's we're try good. another yeah. option here. And that's just, like, that is a reality in that, a lot of fans are like, whatever we have right now is not working because it hasn't won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Even if it's very good. Dak is very good. And but it's but fans are like, hey, I want to replace him. So now the fascination is I just wanted to know what the guy does. Like, okay. what does he do well? I think I finally got to see the running aspect of sure. it. Sure. Uh that was a big factor. And I saw him lead a couple of very long drives that I was like, okay, that was pretty good too. That touchdown drive that he led, I thought was really nice. Nice throw there, too. Um, But, you know, it just, what got proven to me, which I think if you're not going to play your starters at all in the preseason, then you have to know what your backups are. We got to see he's not ready to play in the NFL. He still has a lot of work to do. And if a team is willing to say, you know what, I think the running is electric. I'm willing to give him that time because we have the reps for him here. Then you make a trade with any team that says that that offers you something, anything, pretty much at this point, honestly, because he's not gonna. I don't know if you're gonna be able to turn him into anything more if you're planning on keeping Dak around. If I told you that right now, the Cowboys get offered a fourth round pick and Jerry turns it down, I would be upset with him for that. Okay, because but if he got offered a sixth round pick and he turned it down. In Jerry's mind, it's, well, I gave a fourth yeah. round up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be wrong about my assessment of the player. Sure. So that's when, and, and you're a lot of times, Kevin, Jerry does talk about this a lot, and it has to do with the Parcells approach, too. If they were a first round pick, they were a first round pick for a reason. Yeah. And if I'm getting them for a fourth, and that's a steal to me, that's what the way Jerry looks at it. So Jerry had a lot of fascinating things to say in the post game. First of all, somebody asked him, do you have any regrets about trading a fourth round pick for Trey Lance? The scouting department's about to take it on the chin with this one. For a fourth round pick? Are you kidding me? Although we did get Dak with our second fourth round pick, but we've had some that didn't play in the fourth round too. It kind of felt like he really devalued day three of the draft right there when he was like, for a fourth round pick? Are you kidding me? And well, because he had the vision. I mean, he t- turned his Cowboys from, what, a $100 million investment to a $10, $10 billion, billion dollar. investment. So he's like, no, my, my investment should be going up, not down. Okay. Or staying the same. And so cut number 21. This is, as you'd probably guess, kind of a longer cut. But we're going to play this following this other thing from Jerry. He was talking about Trey Lance, and he said... I hate that those five interceptions are going to be a stat on a game that I couldn't have asked for more reps in a better situation to watch him play. I think he's right about that. That that part right there. Okay. I want to isolate what you just read. Yep. Because I agree with him. I, I we We invested in him, and we're never going to see him play a regular season game unless something bad has happened. Agreed. He does not have the, the, rep, the repetitions in game to actually be productive. So what we were able to give him was very important to him and to us in our assessment of him. So I agree with that. He goes on to say, but I'm glad I'm glad that you said that. That's what I wanted to hear. He needed that because the one thing he's missing more than anything, to your point, Corey, is the lack of reps and much less NFL reps. Certainly we're planning on him being on the roster for sure. I get that. Here's the next part. I think the main thing is improvement from over the last six weeks. That's impressive. Very impressive. What you're looking for is the arrow going up, and it's going up dramatically for Trey Lance. Really, every practice and every game. All right. 
I can only speak for the stuff I've seen, what, whether in person or obviously on social media. I saw it multiple times his arrow did not go up from practice to practice, let alone dramatically go up. If he's saying from where we started to where we are now, I get that. But when he says it dramatically goes up every practice, every game, we thought he played better on Saturday than he did the week before. Because I just feel like that is disingenuous. He started. He did. And that, I mean, like, that was something that we hadn't seen. So, yeah, he he definitely got that. I, yeah, I would I would say I disagree with the dramatic part of it. Okay. If anything, anytime his arrow went up, it went back down for something. And that's okay. just, that's the inconsistency that comes along with it. Uh, the, that's, he is clearly not what we didn't get to see in college and what we haven't been able to see for his entire uh, rookie contract there is is what exactly what we were going man is he that or is he the other side of it and so far he is not the other side of it now if you didn't listen to the game right here on 1053 the fan you might have missed out on one of the big things Trey Lance also fumbled the ball twice but cut number 21 this is what caught people's attention third and 3 in the middle of the blue star at the 50 on a rollout, uh, Lance's uh, pass is intercepted and uh, picked off by Tony Jefferson. Trey Lance at quarterback, Davis next to him, back looking right, standing, running, moving in the pocket, throwing in the end zone, intercepted. Third and four, snapping the gun. Lance throws a bullet tipped and intercepted. At the 20, coming down the left side to the 15, and running right over Lance for the touchdown, Traymon Morris Brad. Snap back on third and four. Pressured. Lance escapes to his right, throws out of desperation. A silly catch and then a steal for an interception. Uh, that's not, a really nice play, even though the ball maybe shouldn't have been thrown. No, that's not a play that Trey Lance wants to make right there. Wheels yeah. down the side. It's intercepted in the end zone. Uh, and he taken the game's over. So the five interceptions are what caught people's attention. Now, I'm sure the Rams would argue, like the Cowboys would argue with what happened with Stetson Bennett. They're like, hey, we just, we wanted to see him get the time. Yeah, we wanted to see him throw the ball down the field. There's still, Kevin, that's where the assessment of still haven't seen him make good decisions downfield. Like, there, there's a you lot of... You heard that of, on the fourth one, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of those moments where you're like, he's, he's still holding on to the ball more than I'd like him to. There's... I want him to play the quarterback position. Uh, and so, yeah, those those turnovers, that's what the other thing Jerry was talking about. It's unfortunate that that's going to be the story where they may have gone, we just want to see this this bit of progress, and maybe they saw it. Maybe they saw it on the touchdown drive. They were like, all right, that's good. That's the quality we were looking for. Hey, go take some risks. But it was, Kevin, it was the, the rollout for a short pass that Tony Jefferson picks off. Yeah. You're like, whoa, that was a bad throw, dude. Yeah. And so th those are the little things that you're like, oh, man. So the feedback we've gotten has kind of fallen into two categories, which is sort of what I think we both thought how it was going to fall. And because I don't mean this to bash Trey Lance. I'm just fascinated by how much people are following this saga. And here are the answers. These are the two most prevalent answers above everything else. For the 972, I honestly don't think it's a fascination with Lance. It's a fascination with anything that's not a $60 million quarterback that you know you probably won't win a Super Bowl with. From the 214, some people hate Dak, and then other are intrigued by Lance's potential. He was a top three pick. From the 214, give Lance time and a starting line, wide receiver, running back, and his ability to move, then how good could he be? Lance is still insanely young with little playing time. So it seems like it boils down to two things. People who don't like Dak or don't like, maybe it's just don't like the price tag on Dak. Yeah, or, or feel like his career, you're like, okay, we're done with that project. Okay. Let's move on to another project. And then the other part is what you said about, hey, he went number three for a reason, lots of potential. My concern, let's talk about the potential part first. My concern is I, I, I just want to know more about how the Cowboys think that will be realized with them because Trey Lance is out of contract once the season's up, right? And barring something terrible, we do not expect to see him on the field probably at all this well, season. Well, Kevin, being a cowboy gets you other things that you don't get anywhere else in, in the NFL. May, yeah, that 
So he'll sign here for cheaper because I mean, look at CD. Yeah, that CD's clearly, clearly holding out. Working out with them on CD. Going to have to deal with the cheaper contract. As because... the rumblings continue, that they're less than a million dollars apart. That's it. Yep. So he needs another Tom Thumb commercial, is what you're saying. You know what? Maybe so. But how are the Cowboys going to realize the benefit to that? So what that would mean to get the benefit of that? That means you would have to give Trey Lance a contract at the end of the year. Significant contract. I see. I don't think so. But I'm not entirely sure how to start that metric because I know some people will be like, oh, you saw what happened with Jordan Love. Not this contract, but the one before that when he had only played a little. Well, that's still more than Trey Lance is going to play. Is Trey Lance going to be willing to sign for, I don't know, let's just say like $3 million or somewhere around what you've been paying Cooper Rush? Or do you think he's going to go somewhere that are like, hey, we'll give you $3 million base guaranteed but we'll ha- add a lot more if you think you can win this starting job. So you, so let me ask you this: in that little phrase that you just said there, Kevin, I'm just going to assume this. You don't want to have invested all this time in getting him here, exactly. and now somebody's going to work with work with him on the cheap. Exactly, they're uh, going to have a potential starting quarterback on the cheap. Exactly, because what I think is maybe the Cowboys envision that they could eventually trade him. For another draft pick. All right, great. Well, if you're going to be able to do that, you're going to have to give him a contract at some point, unless you think magically he's going to get all of this experience out on the field during this season. So that's what I just don't totally understand, because I still think in the back of my mind, and I know we can ask Jerry this, we can ask Steven this. I don't predict either one of them will be like, well, you figured it out. I still think that Trey Lance is really there, not only as a developmental quarterback, but as somebody that they're going to pitch the hope for in case this Dak contract doesn't work out. Because you think about it, if Dak walks, they're in a lot of trouble on the salary cap. They're going to be out $40 million for Dak either way. But then you can be like, hey, it's only $44 million because we got Trey Lance and we're only paying him X amount of dollars, and he was a number three pick. That's higher than Dak. That's amazing. Blah, 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 blah. I still think that's the real reason he's here. Well, and you want to add some more to that. Well, if if that's the case, if Dak doesn't get the job done, doesn't secure a contract for the future, and they do turn to this, it's a possibility McCarthy's not here. I would agree with that. And then you're tying your quarterback to a new head coach, and are you saying we're winning right now, or are you saying... I We're can't. gonna draft a couple times. We need yeah. to we need to have another couple bad seasons, draft a little bit, let this coach build his thing from the bottom up, and we're gonna move on here. That like that's I mean, C- having CeeDee Lamb around, would that be a benefit or would that be uh, a oh, problem yeah, if he's think- got this big old contract and you're trying to build with youth? So I I mean there is a lot that this season is riding on, Kevin, for for a lot of people, for a lot of players in this. And to go along with all of this from the four six nine. I'm going to read this for a very specific reason. I don't agree. Okay, but hold on one second, because I'm with you on that. From the 469, Lance is one of the worst Cowboys trades ever. Thankfully, they only gave up a fourth round, but massive overpay, wasted roster spot, and cap space. Here's why I wanted to read that. It also came up from Mac Angle at the Fort Worth Star Telegram. And I know, I like Mac a lot. I know sometimes he will write some more inflammatory things to get the people invested. But it says, unofficial results are in. Dallas Cowboys trade for Trey Lance is a far-reaching disaster. And it gets mentioned in the same breath to kick off the article as Joey Gallo, Galloway and Roy Williams. And I disagree with that a lot because it was a fourth-round pick. Like, that's a valuable asset. But it wasn't Joey Two Galloway. Tra- picks. Yeah, it wasn't that. <laughs> it just wasn't. I don't think this... Even if Trey Lance never does anything and he leaves and whatever, I don't think this is anywhere near those other ones. Well, that's not the one. Yeah, somebody said, wow, worse than Roy Williams? No, I don't agree. Yeah, no, I do not agree. With but that. the other one that I didn't agree with, Kevin, Lance would have minimal interest on the open market. I don't I don't know about minimal. I think, I think NFL f- teams all work the same, and they're like, well, they couldn't figure it out because they can't develop. I think there's about 15 teams that would probably say we would like to take on the project. I'm not, again, I don't know what his asking price is. I don't know what kind of leverage he has. It's very high. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know. I don't know how his agent would pitch that, other than he can run. He's dynamic athlete. He's right. He's right there on the cusp. He's ready for it. You know, that's how I'm selling it. If I'm an agent, but I don't think it would be minimal interest because, again, quarterbacks are are hard to find. 
and they would probably look at it and say, "Hey, this one we can we can do something with. We can fix them." There's a whole lot of feedback on this, which I think feeds into my very beginning question of why the fascination with Trey Lance, because it seems like we all agree the fascination is there from the team, from the fans. People want to see what's going to happen with him. Is the fast? How much of the fascination is Cowboys quarterback? Because Cowboys quarterback is always a topic. I agree. How much of it is Trey Lance is because he's the Cowboys quarterback? Locally, I think you're going to talk about it anyway. I think that's part of it. I also think people are waiting one way or another to talk about how the Cowboys pulled it off or blew it. Or blew it. Yep. Exactly. And so, like, I don't know which direction it's going to go. But you know there are people who are waiting to be like, holy crap, the Cowboys did it. They took something the 49ers couldn't do jack with, and they made him a starting quarterback in the NFL. Or there's just as many, if not more, people waiting for this, you know, Star Telegram column of "good call, moron." Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't, not, I'm not saying that's what wow. I think, but I think that's what people are sitting back and thinking. And then there's a whole other, other, there's a whole other contingent that are saying, could that have been our starting running back? You know, I know we talked about that with Leah Fowl as well, but. Could that have been another spot for your starting running back? And how's that going to impact this season? Never. That will never come up? No, because it was always Zeke, Kevin. It was always Zeke. Okay. I guess that is possible. Oh, here it is from the 817. Kevin, it's a fourth-round pick that should have been your starting running back in Trey Benson.